Frozen 2 opened our eyes to a lot more of the lore surrounding Elsa and her icy powers. Throughout the film, we got to follow Elsa on her journey to discover the truth, which ultimately led her to Atuhalan, where she learned that she was the fifth element and necessary for the balance to be restored. Now, for a lot of people, there is the common misconception that only four elements exist in nature, in terms of fire, water, earth, and air. But they are actually off by half. Instead of four elements, there are actually eight, and many think the film made this pretty clear when they named Elsa the fifth element. On the element wheel, we can find the eight elements, which are as follows. Fire, water, earth, air, ice, energy, light, and dark. Now, energy, light, and dark are depicted differently depending on what sources you look at, but the most common representations are energy in the form of lightning or electricity, light that comes in the form of the sun, and darkness that takes the form of the moon. Throughout the first two films, we've managed to meet five of these elements so far. We have Elsa, the Snow Queen, who is the embodiment of ice. We met Bruni, the blue salamander that embodies the element of fire, and Gale was the gust of wind representing air. We also saw the rock giants who were the mountain-sized embodiment of earth. And last but not least, we met Nock, the raging representation of water. But where are the other three? We have yet to meet any of them, which has a lot of fans wondering why. According to the element wheel, every element has its opposite, and each opposite actually balances out its opposing element. Now, in the Frozen films, it looks like a few of these elements are missing. With Elsa being discovered as the fifth element, fire now has its opposite, ice. Gale and the rock giants were never too far from one another, meaning that earth and wind were another set of opposites off of the list. The next two elements that we haven't seen in the films yet, but still seem to be in balance throughout the movies, are actually light and dark. So, the one that has us extra curious is lightning. Lightning is the element that is the opposite of water, which is represented by Nock. And if you remember in Frozen 2, Nock was not very happy when he met Elsa. He was clearly out of sorts, and the most aggressive spirit we met in the film. This is leading many to believe that the next film is going to have something to do with a sixth element, the one that balances out Nock and brings peace to the elemental spirits. Now, no one knows who that is yet, but surprisingly enough, it looks like Olaf may have actually given us a huge hint as to who the sixth element is supposed to be. Not only is she likely going to be the embodiment of lightning, but she's also likely going to play a major role in the events that take place in the highly anticipated Frozen 3. Now, even though we haven't met them yet, we believe that there is a major clue hidden within one of Olaf's lines in the second film. Do you remember when Olaf is wandering through the woods calling out for his companions who had all separated by this point? During this scene, he called out everyone's name, plus one. As he was walking, he yelled, Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Sven, Samantha, and then humorously laughed saying, I don't even know a Samantha. At first, that just seemed like a funny Olaf moment, especially when it was followed up with him tripping and then peering into a sinkhole asking for Samantha. But what if I told you that there was more to it than just Olaf being Olaf? Many are beginning to speculate that Samantha is actually meant to be the sixth element and we just haven't met her yet. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, but if we haven't met her yet, how does Olaf know her name? Well, the answer to that is actually really interesting. Do you remember when we learned that water contained memories? Which was, by the way, another quote we heard Olaf randomly say as if it had no meaning at the time. Come to find out it did, giving Anna and Elsa the ability to see some of their parents' final moments, as well as Elsa discovering her parents' past at Atahalan. Well, when you think about it, Olaf is just a giant mass of frozen water, so he would retain whatever memories that he is technically made out of. And if that's the case, the fact that he is connected to Elsa, who is one of the elements, he would be connected to Samantha in the same way that Elsa would be. Now, I know a lot of fans believe that Anna was going to be the sixth element and be the opposite of Elsa by having her powers relating to fire. But sadly, that's not the case. And that's not just a theory either. Not only have we met Bruni, the fire spirit already, but the directors of the Frozen films have confirmed that Anna is not the sixth spirit. But what's really crazy about Anna is that she's actually a part of the fifth spirit alongside her sister Elsa. As the directors explain it, they confirm that both Anna and Elsa share a bond stronger than most people do, and in many ways would not be whole without the other one by their side. And even though Elsa is the literal embodiment of the Sixth Spirit, the bond that they share and the fact that they were both needed to unite Arendelle and the Enchanted Forest makes Anna just as much a part of the element as her sister is. In fact, both of the princesses were needed to lift the curse of Atahalan. Elsa played her part by taming the other spirits and finally discovering the cause of the curse all along. Meanwhile, Anna was equally playing her part by taking matters into her own hands, destroying the dam and putting an end to all of the damage that the previous king, their grandfather, had caused all those years ago. 
The two sisters went their separate ways at the end of the movie in order to maintain the bond and the balance of the fifth element. Anna served as the human balance on the opposite side of the dam by becoming the new queen of Arendelle, while Elsa went to live among the other spirits to keep the peace and balance there. Without one, there would be an instability of sorts. Knowing all of this actually helped set up the conflict and plot of Frozen 3. It would make a lot of sense for it to be something to do with one of the other missing elements that we haven't seen yet, specifically the energy one, which would be represented by lightning. I mean, we saw in Frozen 2 that the elements aren't always on the best terms with one another. For instance, like the time that Nock literally tried to kill Elsa on sight when she was trying to reach Otta Holland. And just like we learned throughout the movie, when the balance is lost, the other elements all go out of control, only to be calmed by another spirit. And it actually goes even deeper than that. It looks like while one element might be able to tame and assist another element, it almost seems like the only way an element can help another one find peace is if the two happen to be opposites. Like when Elsa was going around taming all of the other spirits and helping do her part to restore the balance that was thrown off by the curse. We see her interact with the other elements, but the only one that she herself was able to genuinely help come to peace was the fire element, Bruni. Bruni was going crazy before Elsa managed to help him. He was literally running all across the forest setting everything he touched ablaze. It wasn't until Elsa arrived and managed to put out his flame that he was able to completely relax. He even appeared to be quite grateful for her as well. The two almost immediately bonded, and a lot of people believe it's because the two were balancing each other out. As for Gale and the Rock Giants, well, they seem to be rather calm considering all of the chaos around them. I mean, sure, they get aggressive towards the humans and are feared, but some will argue that it's simply because it's the humans' fault for all of the unrest, causing the Rock Giants to become hostile towards them. But other than that, the earth and air elements both seem to be living rather calm existences, and this is probably because they are there to balance each other out. Neither can go wild with the other one there. Now, Nock, on the other hand, is a totally different story. As of right now, he has been the most chaotic and dangerous spirit that we have seen. He is not a happy camper. Not only did it kill Anna and Elsa's parents, but it also tried to kill Elsa, another element as well. In fact, Elsa was never really able to fully calm the element either. I mean, sure, Elsa was able to tame Nock, but the sea was still wild and it didn't seem like she had brought it peace and balance, like when she interacted with Bruni. This is most likely because she isn't Nock's opposite. Though she was able to bond with the spirit to a certain extent and keep it from going too wild, it was only a temporary tame to get to Otta Holland and to stop the destruction of Arendelle. So the main question here is, why is Nock so restless and vengeful? Could it possibly have something to do with Samantha, the possible sixth element? Maybe it's simply because she's missing, or somehow in danger, that Nock is acting out in such a wrathful way. Maybe it's because Nock can't find the balance that Bruni has found with Elsa, and the Rock Giants have found with Gale. It seems to be clear that Nock needs Samantha in order to find the peace and balance that it is looking for. The one thing we know for sure is that, for some reason, Nock was trying to stop anyone from getting to Otta Holland, and we think that might be our next big clue for the plot of Frozen 3. We believe that the answer to what happened to the other elements, mainly Samantha, lies within Otta Holland, and that is why Nock was trying so desperately to keep it safe. It wasn't acting out of evil, but more out of fear. For some reason, Nock felt the need to guard Otta Holland no matter what. And as we know, Otta Holland is a magical river from ancient times. It appears to be made up of water that is overflowing with memories, and that's why it is assumed to hold the secrets of the past. The river plays a massive part in the culture of North Doldra, so much so that they even have a lullaby about it that they sing, called All is Found. Though like many things sung about from ancient times, Otta Holland was believed to be nothing more than a myth until Elsa managed to find it. And when she did, we saw that Otta Holland was less of a river and looked more like a glacier. Which I suppose some will argue is a river of ice, but either way, when Elsa found it, she knew exactly what it was. And upon discovering the ancient river, she then discovered that she was the fifth element and was opened up to all of the memories Otta Holland had for her. The entire movie, Otta Holland had been calling her so that it could awaken her memories of the past and help her realize her destiny. And that is exactly what is theorized for Samantha. It's likely that Samantha is just another human like Elsa, who is unaware of what she was meant to be. But what if it is her destiny as well to journey to Otta Holland to discover the truth and ultimately bring balance to the raging seas and the fearful Nock? Nock will likely remain aggressive until his opposite comes to calm him down. This is where Samantha will likely come in. With her being the sixth element, she will be able to connect with Nock on the level that Elsa connected with Bruni and finally bring the ultimate balance to the water spirit. Not much information is known about Frozen 3, but I know for a fact that most of us can't wait for it. The first two installments were excellent, and the second one specifically set the floor for a whole bunch more lore to come about. What about you guys? What do you hope to see or learn in Frozen 3? Be sure to let us know. That's all, Disney fans. 
Let us know what video you'd like to see next in the comments and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.